Welcome to the Only Maids Podcast. Now your host from Dallas, Texas, Nikki and Misty. Hey, you guys. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Nikki. I'm Misty. How are you, Misty? I'm doing good. How are you, Nikki? I'm hanging in there. We're on episode six. Can you believe it? It's It's been a good season so far for our first season. It I think has. so. It has. It's been an amazing season. I'm having so a good far. time. Yes. So, yeah. you know, everything's been positive and uplifting, but today yes. we're going to talk about some serious things. Yes. This episode is failure is an option. It is. It's always an option. But you know, I read something today, too, that said, um, you're not a failure until you blame it on someone else. Because I feel like even when you do <laughs> fail, you're actually learning. Like, you learn how not to do it the next time. You right. know what I mean? Definitely. So, really, you're not. And none of it's failure until you say it's like it's their fault that you failed. Right. When you're not taking the accountability. I read that. I'm serious. I, I thought it was great. I like it. I, yeah, that was an interesting concept. I need to dive deeper into. Yeah, it just popped up today. And I was like, oh, hey, that's our episode today. <laughs> Please show that episode. I mean, that. Uh, I will. I'll that go away. I can find it. So. But yes, we. it's important to talk about this in our industry specifically because yes. people think they can just, you know, grab a mop and a broom and hop in and just start going and at it. going to roll in? No. No, no, no. no. There's going to be many days you fell. Right. But. They always forget the preparation part. You don't, failure is an yes. option, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be what it is. You know what I'm saying? There's, if your only option is to succeed, then failure is not an option. Right. And preparation is key to success. And, and that part is often left out, specifically in our industry, because right. everybody thinks it's just so easy. They do. You know what I mean? So yeah. they, they don't see any preparation. Because it is a not, low startup cost. But there's right. so much more behind it. Exactly. That, that people don't think about and don't prepare for ever. Right. It's like what? Like, Just for example, um, a plan. Right. Like, how to market yourself, dealing with clients, yes, different personalities. Yes, and then the days that you're going to walk into a place and just want to cry because you're like, why did I take on this client? Right, <laughs> and then taking care of your body as well. Yes. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Like like we discussed before, this job is physically demanding. Yes. You have to have a you have to have a plan at least to remain fit and yes. be able to do it. You know, yeah. some people do this do. for years. I don't know yeah. how. On end. They definitely have like, prepared. I get burned out sometimes because I work myself too hard. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm trying to get to a point to where I listen to my body better. Like when I'm like super tired, my body is tired. I'm like, okay, Misty, you have to make yourself sit down and rest. Right. But I'm a busy body. I'm always doing something. I'm always on the go, always doing. And so there's got to be those times where I've got to make myself just sit and relax and let my body rest. Exactly. Exactly. But today we have an mm -hmm. awesome guest that we're going to be talking to, Mr. Ed Selko. He has yeah. over 40 years experience yes. in the cleaning industry. I think specifically commercial, cool. yes. but you know, he has a lot of knowledge in gyms that he's going to share we're with gonna us. We're going to pick his brain. Yes. <laughs> and then we're going to discuss his ebook, uh, the 15 deadliest mistakes yeah. that cleaning contractors make, you guys. Hello. So here he is, Ed. We're so glad to have you. Yes. Hello, thank you everybody. for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. We want to pick your brain and get all of that good knowledge you have. My, yes. my brain is pick my brain is pickable and it's the brain. <laughs> Thank you. Let's We're start. glad you're letting us share. Yes. Tell us about yourself and your career in the cleaning industry. Yes. Uh, uh, started cleaning actually uh, uh, for money for the first time when I was in college. Uh, okay. Uh, went, to, went to school down in South Florida and uh, worked uh, uh, cleaning at uh, some of the uh, premier hotels down there, the, okay. the Diplomat and uh, and so forth. Um, got out of school, got a job, uh, with a tie and a desk, exactly like everybody wanted. Right. You know, if you, if you, if you, if you go to all the trouble to go to college, you want to wear a tie and sit behind a desk. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I, I did that and, uh, and there, there, there wasn't enough money in it. Yeah. Right. So, so I decided to go back to school and, uh, only this time I was going to go to school for something that was going to make money. Right. right? Okay. No two ways about it. All right. So uh, I started a uh, program at the university uh, in engineering. Okay. And um, had a uh, had an opportunity 
uh, to, uh, I was looking around for something to do to get me back through school a second time. Right. Uh, because I, I was not in a position to, you know, go back to a, a dormitory and eat, uh, you know, peanut butter and crackers. Uh, had a right. wife and uh-huh. car payments and all that stuff, you know. Right. So um, what happened was uh, I bought a couple of uh, small uh, janitorial contracts, two office cleaning contracts. Oh, okay. And okay. Uh, on my uh, on on my way to school one day, I uh, ran into somebody who worked at uh, one of the one of the really 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 fancy restaurants. And uh, what he told me was, he said, he said, I told him what we, what I was doing. And he said, Oh my God! He says we hate our cleaning people. And I said, uh, Really? Oh. And uh, he he said, Yeah. He says, Yeah. You should you should, you should come on in. So I said, Okay. So I went in there and fumbled my way through a uh, a, a, a walkthrough and then a, okay. a, a proposal and a, a surprise of both surprises. I wound up getting the job. Oh, okay. that's excellent! And and so that pretty much uh, I was on my way. What what pro- propelled me though was uh, while while I was still uh, uh, interested in school, um, I read an article that kind of changed everything for me. Okay, tell us about it that. A, it was a, it was an article called A Production Line Approach to Service. Okay. And and what you may want to do is you may want to put that uh, uh, if you could put that in words on your screen at some yeah, place for we, people. Yeah, that would be an awful lot of help. It was a it was a life altering uh uh, uh, article for me. Okay. Uh, it was by a fellow named uh, Theodore Labbitt. He was a professor at Harvard uh, University. Okay. And essentially, what he said was that the uh, uh, that a service business can be uh, operated uh, with principles from the manufacturing world. Mm, okay. Okay. And <clears throat> he had a great, uh, he had a wonderful uh, uh, illustration where it was a convergence of hard and soft technology at McDonald's. Okay. Okay. Now, at McDonald's, if you think about it, it's pretty amazing that you can walk into a uh, McDonald's in Boston and get a bag of French fries and get the same French fries as you would in San Diego or Portland yeah. or Miami. Right. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. That was very uh, important to their CEO at the time, mm-hmm. for McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big deal. French fries that was, that, be the that, same. That, that was a huge deal. Mm-hmm. And, and and so what the illustration was, was that the hard technology was the machinery. The mm-hmm. fry basket has a right. timer, okay, and a bell. Right. And you turn the, ti- you turn the uh, timer on. When the bell goes off, you, you lift the uh, uh, basket out of the fryer, okay? Okay. The, the system that the people followed was the soft technology, and the hard technology was the machine itself, mm-hmm. all right? Okay. That struck me as an engineering as an engineering uh, student. That struck me as 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 it was huge. It was huge. Right. And what I thought about was this 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 crazy little cleaning business that I was. Uh, it was just uh, all I wanted to do was to get through school with this. I wasn't yeah. thinking about this in any way, shape, or form as any kind of a uh, uh, as a career or anything like that. Right. Uh, but that that article changed my thinking about that, and okay. uh, and and so uh, I, I launched and operated that first company. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a uh, uh, on one level, it was a wonderful success. On a personal level, it was absolutely horrible. It was a right. uh, uh, it was uh, it was very very similar in experience to that split second when you are about to uh, when you are about to uh, that moment of impact in a car accident. Yeah. That moment when you know there's nothing you can do, I'm going to crash this car. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. That happens. It, it was it was like that for 24/7 for, for for a little over 3 years. Oh wow. Uh-huh. Okay. And so the only thing that I figured out was how to get accounts. Right. Okay. Now that sounds wonderful. That, that now you know on you know on when when you know around the Facebook world, you know that sounds wonderful. That's what everybody wants. How do I get accounts and stuff like that? Well, here's the problem, okay? That's only one third of the business. Getting the accounts is one third. Right. A cleaning business is is like a three legged stool. Mm-hmm. Okay. A cleaning business. The three legs are uh, uh, sales and marketing, which I did well. Okay. okay. Then there was operations yes. and finance, which I had no clue. Right. Okay. Absolutely clueless. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
and you really need all three parts to mm. to to have a a uh, a balanced uh, successful company. Think about a three legged stool. If one leg is off, the whole thing is off. The whole, the whole thing is off. Okay. Right. Uh, so um, at any Balance. rate, I sold that. I sold that one and uh, started another one. And to make a long story short, um, I've started a number of uh, uh, cleaning companies uh, o- over this uh, uh, almost fifty year period. Um, wow, okay. Two of them were uh, two of them were national, okay. okay, and they were investment groups for mm. Wall Street money people, okay, okay. Um, and then uh, uh, the balance were all you know small local companies, okay. Right. okay. Uh, what happened was. After after that, uh, I found a uh, I found that I had to uh, uh, I had to step back, and I wound up taking a job back in the industry, and uh, uh, ran into the most wonderful, wonderful, wonderful company, and that was kind of where I got my PhD. We only did great, okay. big, beautiful buildings. Right. Oh, okay. So 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 that that that, that that's kind of the that's kind of the background to me and what happened. Do you do resi- Have you done residential at all, or has it only been strictly? I had, I had, I had, I had, I had, I had no clue. Twice I bought carpet uh, uh, cleaning operations that were residential, okay. and both times I had to close them down. I just, I couldn't make them work. I right. could okay. not. I could not balance the uh, uh, the uh, residential with the commercial. Really, and, okay. and and what I came to understand was that they were different businesses. They yes, are. We, we use some of the we use some of the same tools. We use some of the same uh, uh, methods and uh, techniques, mm-hmm. uh, but essentially they are different, very very different businesses. Yeah, they are. Okay. So uh, no, I, I that that was not something that I even uh, knew anything about until I left the corporate world and went off on my own and ran into a couple of brilliant, brilliant people in the house cleaning industry. Mm. Uh, and that was really the first time that I, I had understood that there was a very substantial residential uh, cleaning business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all of our guests that come on, we like to ask them what the word made means yes. to them. How does that word make them feel and what do they think about it? Have you ever been called a maid? <laughs> <laughs> Great question, Miss D. I'm, listen, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I know this is not what you want, okay? <laughs> okay, but I, I, you know, if you if you tell me, it says, okay, like what's a maid? Uh-huh. Okay, um, it's got that like that little white doily uh, apron, okay? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yes, uh, the black black dress. Okay, spike heels, okay, yes. and fishnet stockings. Okay, right. that's, you asked me. You asked me. Okay. That's why we've decided to throw the word away. Okay. <laughs> we feel like there's no space for it. There's really not. Right. In 2023. No. But Mr. Ed, so we read your ebook and absolutely love it. It's yes. the deadliest mistakes, 15 deadliest yes. mistakes cleaning We've, contractors make. And I found it to be super informative yes. and resourceful. And we'd love to talk to you about it a little bit. Um, when did you, you wrote the book in 2012, 2012. Yes. Yeah. And what well, made you decide to write an ebook? Well, no, the, fir- the, the, the first one was, was really back in the uh, uh, early uh, 1990s. That was the, oh, first okay. One. Okay. the first one of that. Um, I did some I did some writing back then, mm-hmm. and um, and all of it was uh, well not all of it but a lot of it was uh, out of date, and so I had to update right. a bunch of stuff. Okay? Right, right. Um, ebooks are a whole lot easier than publishing mm-hmm. paper books. That yeah. that 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 was a mess. That was mm-hmm. a mess. Um, I wrote uh, the uh, uh, how to profitably bid and estimate cleaning services. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Around around that same time, and then had to do a a, a, a second edition uh, just a few years ago. Wow! So that's, that that's that's where those stand. Okay. Awesome. So we picked five topics from yes. the ebook that we want to discuss. Yes. Okay. The first one of the deadliest mistakes that you listed is failure to plan. Yeah. Please tell us oh, more no. about that one. I that one <laughs> is number one. I love that. Yeah. But a lot of people okay. don't consider well, it. Well, no plan is failure. Right. <laughs> well, you know, the way the way I the way I look at that, a good way to explain this is uh, you know, if you were gonna take the longest, most dangerous trip of your life, 
Would you try it without a map? No, no, no. Excellent point. Uh, you, you, you know what I mean? So, so, so a, 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 that, that, that business plan is really a roadmap. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. It's really a roadmap about what's going to happen. Now, what I notice is uh, the folks that uh, uh, the folks that are that are lost invariably never never had a plan. Right. To begin with. Right. They never they never they never had a plan. Uh, 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 I can't get I can't get contracts. Well, how did you plan to get contracts when you started? Right. What were, what were you thinking? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, I can't I can't find help. Well, what what were you thinking when you started? Where do you where did you think they were going to come from? Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's true. You have so, a plan. So yeah, no, I mean, so all all, all all of these things were very very important, you know. Uh huh. And uh, and and that's that 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 really is a deadly mistake. That's how people wind up uh, wandering around in in Facebook groups. <laughs> True, definitely. True. You there had is. a quote that I absolutely love. You said, "Without a plan, we are wanderers roaming the business world, lost and inefficient." That's good. Oh my god. <laughs> That is good. It's so true, yeah. and it really resonates. And we see it all the time. We and do. Even yeah. just in our local Facebook community, you know, the ladies, sure. a lot of them seem really lost and have a lot of questions, yeah. um, basic questions sometimes. And it's like, yeah, well, you do need a plan, you know what I'm yeah. saying, that you can refer to to guide you and stay on, stay on, on the track. road. Yeah. Get it. Like in your plan, you need to have your goals, yeah. your long-term and short-term goals. Keep going back to your plan to make sure you're reaching those, achieving those, and then make a plan to get to the next goal. Yeah. Now, the, the, the goals are very, very important. That's a great point. I'm glad yeah. you brought that up, okay? Because here's, here's what's very important for everybody to understand, okay? Everybody wants something different from this. Yes. This is true. This is true. Okay. I, ha- I have, I have, I have a good friend, okay, and he operates a three hundred million dollar cleaning service. Wow, mm-hmm. he's very successful, right? Mm-hmm. He's very happy, mm-hmm. right? I live in a uh, 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 kind of a touristy place in Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay, there's a very successful man that I know, and um, he uh, he only works. Uh, uh, on Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, he cleans once a week accounts. Mm, okay. And the reason for that is because he wants to sit drunk at the beach, mm-hmm. okay, and hit on all the girls that come down. Uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> the definitely. Tour. Okay, but the thing is, is that, look, he's as happy as can be. Right. right. That's you, his goal. You don't, you, 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 you don't do any two-day a week? No, I don't do a two-day a week. No, 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 no. It's one day a week. That's it. Yeah. That's it. OK, and, yeah. and, and he gets to stay drunk the rest of the week and he's as happy as can be. So right. everybody wants something different out of this. We are yeah. not all in the same. We're, we're not all cut from the same mold. And not, right. We, right. We, so and it's also important to recognize and acknowledge what it is you think you may want, because mm-hmm. just like where you were discussing, I mean, I'm learning <laughs> as I'm growing that what I thought I wanted out of this isn't really, you know what I mean? Yeah. The at first, I wanted the growth, and I want to be big and national, but I'm learning that that's not really what I want. I kind of want to work two days a week and sit on the beach the rest of the week like <laughs> your guy. <laughs> you know what not I mean? Not a bad idea. Not yeah. a bad idea. You know, well, that, was, that was a very important thing that I did, though, was a, uh, w- one of the most important things that ever happened in my uh, career uh, was taking a time management course, mm. and the, and the time management course it was very very interesting. It was the only one that I've seen that said, "Look, you can't have you can't even think about time management until you figure out first life management." And in yes. order to do yeah. that, you got to figure out what's important, and so you have right. to sit down right. and figure out what's most important. important. Right. Okay. And I feel like that changes so, over time too. What's important? It, it does too. change. It does. Yeah. It, it does Got to go back but, and but, revisit it. Mm-hmm. Well, what they what what he said though was very interesting. He said, "Look, he said, make your goals from the viewpoint of your deathbed." Mm. Oh, ouch! On, <laughs> on your on your deathbed, what will have been most important, important to you? Mm. I love okay. that. I like that one. Okay, I love. That. I don't. Re- I do not remember all the cars I've had. I 
I don't even remember what the hell they were. Okay. Okay. Um, um, back then, though, what I did, one of the things that I really, really wanted was uh, I wanted to. Uh, I just had started having children, mm-hmm. and what I wanted most of all was to be dad. Mm, okay. Yeah. That was important when my kids were little. That, that's why I started cleaning in the first place. Right. So I could be a mom. Mm-hmm. I didn't want my kids in daycare from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I wanted to be the one to raise them and take care of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's important to recognize those things. Yeah. Uh, Figure out what you want. Right. Thank right. you. Um, the next one that yeah. we were going to discuss is failure to, to learn, learn your, your business. business. Yes. But yes, tell us about that more. I feel like that's okay. another area that is underestimated. Okay. Uh, a, 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 a great part of my success was, uh, and it was it was something that I picked up in college. In college, I uh, fell in love with books and bookstores and uh-huh. Uh, and, and, and learning and learning. Um, I didn't learn anything okay. in college. Okay. Uh, but what I, I did learn, uh, well, I, I learned how to learn is what I did. Yes. Okay. I, I learned how to learn. Right. And, um, what was, uh, uh, what was important, uh, what was important was, uh, that I could, um, was that I could, um, Let's see. Let me let me let me step back a little bit. Let me mm-hmm, step back. Okay. Let me step back a little bit. So yes, that sir. problem, that 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 deadly mistake again was what? A oh, failure to, to learn, learn your, business. your business. When I started, there was no internet, and right. um, I didn't know anybody uh, to ask any questions of. The only source that we had back then was our supply people. Mm, okay. Janitorial supply companies was the only place you could get any information at all about anything in the business. Mm, that okay. Been hard. It, it, it was. It was. It was real hard. So what yeah. I did was um, I made it a point uh, to buy every single word that was ever written about the business. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now that took me to. Uh, 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 it took me to. Uh, probably one of the most uh, comprehensive bookstores in the world uh, uh, for hard to find books, which was Strands in New York City. Wow. Okay. Okay. And I was I was very very pleased, and I didn't go there to go to the bookstore. I, I happened to be there. And I thought, okay, we're going. <laughs> okay. To, you know. Okay. Um, so uh, that was a uh, uh, that was a very very important thing. So what happened was was that I accumulated a major 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 library about the industry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just learning about okay. your business in general is you did it with Everything. books but today there's so many other ways that there's, you can there's do other it. ways to do it right. there's other ways to do it um when i was stuck uh, at one point i worked for a very large company and they were sending me um those old uh, uh green bar uh computer pages right oh, okay okay and um and it was four letter words in red saying you know <laughs> what is going on there uh-huh. Okay. okay. And, and, and so what I had to do was I had to, uh, take a, uh, I went to the, uh, uh junior college and, uh, uh, went to a, an accounting, uh, teacher. And I said, look, I don't care about a grade. I just, I got to know this stuff or I'm going to get in trouble. Right. Okay. Right. So, yeah. so I did what, I did what was necessary, uh, in order to, 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 to learn the business. Okay. Uh, Fortunately, I've had enough experiences, different experiences, to where um, I, I think I learned it pretty well. So. I love that. I, you got to know this stuff or you're going to be in trouble. That's right. Yeah. That is an excellent saying. But I want to get in. We have to know. Please tell me more about the image. Yes. Image. Not concerned with image. Please talk about that one some more. Oh, man. what, what that, that's, that's just absolutely a nightmare and a horror story. Uh, it can be. Once, once, well, once again, I go back to the Facebook thing because that seems to be a uh, uh, a very popular place for uh, industry people to congregate is on Facebook. Right, mm-hmm. right. The important thing is you have to look like somebody that can be trusted. Yes, with right. the keys with the keys to your house. There you right. go. It's true. 
Yeah. Okay. And together. So, so mm-hmm. you don't want to show up sloppy and yeah, like no. If I came out of bed and mm-hmm. yeah, listen. If I got cargo shorts on and and a backwards hat and a dirty shirt, okay. Right. You really yeah. want to hand me the keys to your house? Right. I mean, I wouldn't think you would do a good job. Right. <laughs> and then it goes deeper than that, too. Not even just your surface appearance, but your behavior and how you act. I had um, a client complain the other day because, and I didn't, they know they're not supposed to, but some ladies took a smoke break <gasps> at the client's house no, no. and were hanging out in the front yard smoking cigarettes. And it's like, no, no. Image matters, and I feel like it's <laughs> it gets overlooked, especially when I'm in the Facebook and all the groups and stuff yeah. like that. You know, everybody's like, oh, we're just cleaners. We clean toilets. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So they can show up and look and dress and talk however they want to, but no. No. That's why I thought this this one right here was very important yeah. well, and often but underestimated. They're, but they're missing exactly what they do. When they say that they clean toilets... Okay, what they're missing is really what they're doing. What they're doing is they are the first line of defense in the health of the public. Right. Right. Okay, I mean, that's really what they're doing. Yes. Okay, but, you know, the technical part of it, of you know, know, running a, a, a swab through a bowl is really not, you know, is really not what they're doing. What they're doing is they're protecting people's health. Right. True. That's sure. facts. Well, thank you so much, Ed, for this discussion. Yes, I mean, we can great. talk for hours. I, I like love the ebook. There's so much more knowledge I would like to know from you. We'll definitely honestly. have to have him back. Yeah. Yes. Even just from, and the ebook was from 2012, and it's so relevant. I mean, I couldn't put it down. So thank you so much, Ed. Please tell everyone where they can follow you if you want them to. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm real easy to find. If you put, if you put my name in Google, there's, uh, okay. I think there's about 10 pages, okay, okay. on Google. Okay. Solid. Okay, um, but uh, uh, there's two things that I'm uh, uh, that are real big. One is the janitorial subcontracting network, okay, which I okay. created. Okay, yes. about thirty thousand companies. The other thing is now um, our new platform is BSC Connect. Okay, BSC Connect. Okay, right. um, and it's 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 hopefully it's our spot to uh, have people that uh, don't want to deal with all the nonsense on Facebook. Right. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So this is a website. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Okay. okay. We'll share the link. We'll also share the ebook. Yes. And we'll get this for some followers and joining the your groups and your. And uh, we'll definitely have you back. We will. This was awesome, and we appreciate you so much. Yes. Happy to do it. Happy to do it. Anytime. Anytime. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Ed. All right. Thank you so much, Ed. We really appreciate you uh, joining us today, and we will see you definitely again. Definitely going to have to have him on again. He yes. was a great, great speaker. Excellent. Full, full of knowledge. We just need to get. We need more time with him. I feel like a lot we more definitely time. do. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to learn there immediately, and he could just tell us just a little bit here and there of, of his knowledge that he's had over 40 years. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. We didn't even go over all of the ebook. We couldn't get to all. Of it, he right, yeah, but we'll have him back, so we sure will. What's the time? It's now it's time for I think Hotline Clean. Yeah. It's time for Hotline Clean. Yes, uh, Hotline Clean. We have Trina from California. She wrote in and asked if a client requested you as a friend on social media, do you accept them? Yes or no? Dun, dun, dun. I'm a hell no. Uh-huh. I'm a N-O. <laughs> no, no, no. That's a big no, no. I don't want them all up in my personal space. Right. I you don't like invite me over for a barbecue. Why do you want to be on my my Facebook friend list? Right. No, yeah. Not happening. I think there's boundaries. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's important to set those. That's part and of preparation as well. These are the people that Deciding we talked your boundaries. about like in episode one that they, they all of a sudden think they're your friend now. And so they'll be like, oh, but can you go ahead and just like scrub all of my baseboards for free? Because we're friends. Right. Like, right. No, yeah. we are not friends. You're not. No. No, right. no, no. You're not on my friend list. You're not in my backyard barbecue. Right. No. <laughs> Definitely, I don't see any upside to that Mm -mm. you know i think it's crossing boundaries it definitely does and once you do that there's you know all the lines are blurred (laughs) yeah they're all blurred and boundaries is the basis of your client relationship it is it is if that's not set properly then it's all going to fall apart it will it will so no we don't want to be friends on facebook don't 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 let them you know 
like link on up into your, your social media. We're not having that. <laughs> you don't want to do that at all. Yeah. But yeah. So awesome. That was a wonderful, um, viewer question. Yes. So we was. have to go into our sponsors. Yes. What do you got? I have a uh, smart business commerce there. You can always go there to get your merchant accounts, credit card processing needs done. And then, um, uh, custom boats, docks and decks out in East Texas. Right. And of course, ladies, we have lavender sky. They have the best, most beautiful waist beads. It's summertime's coming yeah. up. Oh, true. You know, you want to show off those curves, go to <laughs> lavender sky dot shop. <sighs> Thank you guys for joining us this episode, and yes. we will see you next time. Make sure you like, follow, follow subscribe, subscribe, and share. And share. <laughs> and I'm sure there's so much more that you can do. So just yeah. start by following us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Next time on Only Made. We have a guest today. We are so excited about her. name is Lola Vaughn. Hey, Only Maids. Hey. I'm Lola Vaughn. I'm all the way from Houston, Texas, okay. and I'm a pinup model, yes. and I'm also a business owner, and my business is Lola's Click and Pose, which is a um, place where models and photographers can get together and in a safe space and make art. This podcast has been brought to you by Little Buddy Productions. Go to www.littlebuddyproductions.com for all your video production needs for your small business, nonprofit, or for event videography.